I'm John, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Chef Taka, and I've been a professional chef for almost 20 years. Today I'm making fried calamari with marinara sauce. Today I'm making some fried calamari with Old Bay seasoning and a little bit of dill dipping sauce. Well, what I'm gonna do is gonna blow your mind. I'm starting with fresh squid, and I have beautiful yuzu brightness inside my sauce. These frozen rings are just super easy to work with. I have a bowl with a strainer. I'm just gonna defrost them. With anything, fresh is better than something you're gonna get that's prepackaged. To be real, I have no idea what part of the squid this is. Some smart people might call it the head of the squid. I call it the part before the legs. So I have this uh, big fin reef squid here. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is using the entire whole squid and doing the breakdown from fresh. Whole squid. Couldn't be me. As for the squiddies, these are gonna get cut into rings. And I'm gonna slice until I feel the bone. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is plastic or what. This is part of the squid. This is the gladius, or sometimes known as the pen, actually looks like a feather tipped pen. Learn something new every day, squid spine. So I'm just gonna grab the head here and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back and hopefully everything comes off in one shot and then remove the fins and just start to rub and see if I can loosen up this inner skin that we're trying to remove. I'm gonna cut this squid into three sections just to make sure that it stays nice and tender and soft. We're gonna go ahead and score the outer portion of the squid. Cut this right in half. This is the best parts of the squid, in my opinion. My brine consists of two ingredients. I've got almond milk and some salt. To prep the squid, let it soak in some buttermilk to break down and help to tenderize the squid. I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge for like 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Tops, and I'll be good to go. Now I'm gonna bread my calamari. First step is to crack my eggs Oop, in a bowl. I like to add some milk too. Give this a good old whisk. Coating. Very simple. Today I'm using a wet batter, which is kind of not traditional. All-purpose flour, flour. Rice flour. Corn starch. Here as well. Baking mm -hmm. powder. Then I'm gonna pour a generous amount of breadcrumbs into this other bowl. Seasoned breadcrumbs, because they already have the seasoning and the flavors that I want. Basil, parsley. Some oregano. Old Bay seasoning is just the best seasoning on the planet. Salt, pepper, Bar garlic. powder, which is probably the next best. And then a little bit of black pepper, freshly cracked. Everything gets whisked together, bam. I've defrosted my calamari rings. They're gonna go right into the egg mixture. Gonna give them a nice toss. This wet batter I'm making is a little bit of a play on fish and chips. Instead of the beer, I'm gonna be using seltzer instead. I wanna make sure that I don't overmix this just to prevent any uh, extra formation of gluten. All right, first things first is straining the calamari. So now that these are all coated in the egg, I'm just gonna quickly add them into flour mix breadcrumbs. I just want these fully covered by the breadcrumb, and I don't want to see any white from the rings, so that when I fry it, it gets that nice golden brown color all around. These are all ready to hit the fryer. I'm using a Dutch oven here. So first thing I'm gonna do here is gonna strain the squid from the buttermilk, and then I'm gonna go ahead and pat it dry on some paper towels. Do not forget to season your protein. Just dredging in a thin layer of cornstarch to make it dry before I dunk it into the batter. The, this frying process is gonna be very quick, so I want, I want to make sure I keep a close eye on it. So I'm gonna pan fry my calamari in some hot oil. I like this method because it's really easy, it's quick, may not be the healthiest, but it's gonna give me that nice crunch that I want in a fried calamari. If you're gonna pan fry something that has batter on it, the batter is gonna be drooping down on one side, so you're gonna end up having more batter on one side than the other. Let's get these into the fryer. Give it a little, you know, a little bit of a shake so it's not overly dusty. Calamari in the deep fryer basket. Deep fryer basket now goes into the oil. When you initially put stuff in, tons of bubbles. What I'm looking for is, you know, a nice golden brown color. All right, so I'm just gonna flip these rings. So this looks like it's ready to go. I'm gonna pull this right now. I'm gonna let this rest in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. Five, four, three, two, one, okay. Bang. I'm gonna get these onto a wire rack now. Hit them with a little bit of salt. They smell like fried golden rings of goodness. There's no other way to describe them. I'm so excited. My calamari is all fried up. Calamari are fried. Back from the fridge, I'm gonna drop it into the fryer one last time to make sure the exterior is super crispy. The second fry, we are trying to aim for a higher temperature than the first fry, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the small fins here. They feel super crispy, and they're the thinnest meat, the, the head and the tentacles. And the last piece I'll, I'll, I'll be pulling out is the body. Salt immediately. So there's really nothing worse than dried calamari because you have to have it with a dipping sauce. I'm gonna be using a simple jarred marinara, but I'm gonna jazz it up, make it fancier. I, I respect the jar, John, because 
doing the same thing. So I'm gonna be making a yuzu aioli with a touch of a little Old Bay to give it that little twist. Woo! I'm gonna start by cutting up some of this fresh dill. An egg, crack it and separate the whites from the yolk. So I'm gonna be just adding a little bit of mustard to this. Incorporate the mustard with the egg yolk. I'm just gonna add some crushed red pepper for a little heat. Some crushed garlic. And then last but not least, some fresh basil from the store. This smells so good. Like this smells like my childhood. Stir this up. Cut this lemon in half, throw the juice in here. So I've got some vegan mayo here. Me and mayonnaise don't really get along in my, my tum tum. And once I have this, I'm gonna start to pour in the oil very slowly. I'm using here yuzu juice to loosen up the mayonnaise. Add a little bit of sugar, add a little bit of salt here as well. And also, I'm just adding a little bit of obe here, hitting all the different spots, salty, sweet, spicy. So I'm gonna let all the flavors melt together. And in the meantime, I'm gonna slice up my lemon, lemon for an additional garnish. You know, a squeeze of lemon just adds a little citrus, a little brightness. The sauce, I really just wanna get it hot, get those flavors melded together. Okay, let's taste this out. Bang, quick and easy. I think it's ready to go. I feel very happy. Plating time. This calamari looks great. Some of the rings are perfectly coated all over, nice and thick, look great. Whereas others didn't do as well, but that's okay. Once you eat them, they all taste the same, so. My little bowl of sauce is gonna go onto the plate. I'm gonna pile all the calamari around it. Like they're waiting to climb in and jump into that sauce. One of my big pet peeves is having something super crispy and then introducing a liquid on top of it, which is gonna make it all soggy. So here, I'm gonna be adding the yuzu zest. It's gonna add that nice acidic pungency. I'm gonna use this uh, aioli as my base to work around. Here I got my ears, let's create some body here. And then I'm gonna take my big pieces and I'm gonna finish this with the tentacles and the head. Last one on the plate. I have my seasoned marinara sauce. Gorgeous. And then last but not least, lemon wedge. A couple slices of lemon. Add a little bit more yuzu zest on top. And this is my fried calamari with a marinara dipping sauce. And that is my fried calamari. And that is my fried calamari with a yuzu mayo. I was able to achieve this beautiful brown crispy crust on this calamari. It looks like something you'd get while you're sitting on the beach, looking out, watching the waves crash. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I eat these is hit Slice them with the lemon. lemon. I am so excited to try these out. Let's go. Into the sauce. Moment of truth. Mm. 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 That is really good. Crunchy, chewy, flavorful. The inside is perfectly cooked, nice and tender from the buttermilk. The acid in the mayo is cutting all the fat out. All a day's work. That's delicious. I think this is a winner. Calamari is a delicious, often fried seafood dish with lots of options for preparation. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Calamari is made from squid, a cephalopod in the phylum mollusk. Squid are carnivores with large eyes and arms attached directly to their heads. They have extremely thin muscle fibers with proteins that contract when heated, so cooking them properly is essential to avoiding rubbery calamari. John used frozen calamari rings. The hood is trimmed, scored, and put through a machine that cuts it into rings. They're then flash frozen and bagged for convenience. Daniel used fresh squid that required cleaning before or being cut into rings. Sometimes when you're working with fresh fish, you'll find some surprises, like part of the animal's cartilage or a rogue tentacle. Taka used a whole fresh reef squid. Scoring the hood makes the squid more tender and gives it a nice shape as it's fried. Taka was careful not to waste any part of the squid. John used store-bought commercial breadcrumbs. They contain a lengthy list of preservatives, dough conditioners, and anti-molding agents. Although they are crispy, the particle size is small and they tend to make a thinner crust. Daniel soaked his rings in almond milk and dipped them in a mixture of seasoned starches, which included Old Bay seasoning, a favorite to use with any seafood. Taka soaked his squid in buttermilk and then was careful to thoroughly dry his squid before seasoning it. He made a batter for his squid from a blend of starches, baking powder, and seltzer water. The effervescence of the seltzer and the formation of carbon dioxide from the baking powder added a tender quality to Taka's batter. 
John pan fried their calamari, but John had some trouble with the breading. It didn't adhere well to the wet squid. The excess water steamed when he put his squid in the hot oil and his breading fell apart a bit. Daniel fried in hot vegetable oil. Taka did a double fry method, cooling his calamari in between fries. The first fry lightly cooks the fish. Cooling in between means it will not become tough from overcooking and mitigates for differences in temperature as the squid comes out of the hot oil. The second frying makes the breading on the calamari extremely crispy. All three chefs rested and seasoned their calamari immediately after frying, while the heat of the fish and coating are primed for seasoning that adheres perfectly. Calamari is a delicious appetizer lunch dinner, late night snack, tasty and satisfying any time of the day or night. When you're thinking of making this delicious dish, we hope you'll take some tips from our three talented chefs.